Hi, my name is Natalie Fun, and I'm a certified nutritional therapist practitioner. I wanted to talk to you today about the word hereditary, um, and I'll be sharing an example of Dr. Pottinger and an experiment he did with cats. Um, so to start off with, I wanted to just share the um, definition of hereditary, which is something that is transmitted or capable of being transmitted genetically from parent to offspring, or is derived from or fostered by one's ancestors. Um, our society's common perspective, in my opinion, um, is that we tend to feel somewhat victimized by, uh, by the word hereditary. So like I have a diabetic father and I think that commonly, you know, people who have diabetes or heart disease um, or like a big one is like the female cancers, if those run in the family, a lot of times you believe that you can try to live a moderate lifestyle um, or a moderate diet along with lifestyle and try to avoid like catching those diseases, um, but we tend to feel like at some point it's going to get us um, because commonly it does. If it runs in your family, typically you are going to get it. However, um, and hopefully I'll give you a new perspective with the story of Dr. Pottinger and his cats, um, I believe that the, you know, the damage can be reversed. It does take generations, um, but if you, if you stop where you're at right now and decide that you want to live a different way and start taking steps in that direction, I believe that you can live a much healthier life than if you proceed in the average American consumer's diet and lifestyle. So um, here we go with Dr. Pottinger and his cats. Basically, um, he had, the experiment was over four generations and included over 900 cats. Um, he divided them into five groups. The first and second group were grouped together, so basically it was one group just double the size of the other groups. Um, they were fed raw meat, raw milk, um, and the raw meat, by the way, is, was provided by a local but butcher. It was just scraps um, that the butcher was getting rid of anyway, but still high quality raw meat. Um, then the third group was pasteurized milk, uh, fourth group was evaporated milk, and the fifth group was evaporated, evaporated sweetened milk. Um, so just to give you some perspective, pasteurized milk is what is uh, in the average American consumer's household unless you have co-opt a cow and somehow have a way of getting raw um, pasture-raised cow's milk, which not very many people have access to because it's technically not legal by the FDA standards. So um, probably you're drinking pasteurized milk. Um, evaporated milk and evaporated sweetened milk you may think is not in your diet. However, I urge you to press pause right now and go look in your cupboards because unless you are already like a crazy stickler about um, reading ingredients, it is highly likely that any kind of conventional processed food you have in your uh, pantry right now has evaporated milk or evaporated sweetened milk. So it is likely in your diet. <laughs> Anyway, um, so basically what happened is that um, four generations down, the first and second group of cats flourished. Um, they remained um, reproductive health, or maintained reproductive health. Um, the, you know, their coats stayed healthy and beautiful and thick. They um, maintained dental health and facial structure and body structure. Um, their they didn't experience um, social anxiety, you know, out of the ordinary um, depression or um, like food allergies. However, um, these issues, uh, structural deformities, social stress, allergies, and reproductive problems, along with um, things like tumors, um, heart issues, and, um, you know, blood sugar issues, we, we did see, or we, Dr. Pottinger did find that first generation of all three cats um, developed diseases or these issues um, at the end of their life. Then he found that the second generation developed diseases in the middle of their life, and the third generation of all three processed food groups developed diseases early in life, often within the first six months. Um, many died before, oh yeah, many died before six months of age, and were unable to produ reproduce. Um, so the evaporated sweetened milk obviously was the least healthy, um, while the evaporated milk and the pasteurized milk 
were the ones that, you know, if they, if they could get past the depression and social anxiety, um, their bodies were simply not healthy enough to carry a kitten to term. So, um, yeah, none of them were able to reproduce healthfully. Um, so basically the, you know, the parallels to draw here are that we do have these processed foods in our diet, um, in the human diet, and we are seeing a lot of these same issues um, happening with humans. Um, and it is something that if you think about, like when I was a kid, old people were the ones who were dying of cancer and heart disease and diabetes and suffering from, um, you know, memory disorders like um, Alzheimer's and uh, dementia. But we're seeing all of these issues. Um, now it's, it's almost like my parents' generation are developing all of these issues. Not at the end of their lives, but they're in, you know, the middle of their lives. And they're in their, like, late 40s and 50s are developing heart disease and cancer and diabetes and, you know, other, like, major social stresses. Um, and then even fast forward, or not fast forward, but <laughs> look down the line. And um, so I would consider myself probably like fourth generation on processed food. Um, so kids younger than me are still like fourth, maybe even fifth generation on processed food. Um, I as a nanny have been exposed to um, just lots of different children and I love talking with them about you know, school and other kids, and what I've found recently is that so many children have asthma, um, which is, you know, obviously a lung condition, but also affects the sinuses. Um, and then so many kids have major dental problems. So if you've seen my other videos on how I healed my root canal infection, um, I do talk a lot more about dental issues and what that means to health. Um, or what your health means to your dental issues more, <laughs> more accurately. Um, but anyway, we're seeing all of this like facial structure problems, internal problems, ADD, children with cancer, children with blood sugar problems. Um, this is a huge problem. And uh, you know, fortunately what Dr. Pottinger did find is that um, groups two and three pasteurized and evaporated milk, um, over three generations he was able to bring them back to a healthy, flourishing um, community of cats. Um, it did take time, it took generational changes, and it took, um, you know, the work to get there. So um, basically, if you're a person who is, you know, leaning towards or have been eating whole foods, I encourage you to keep up with what you're doing and just make um, all the small changes you can. Make the best choice you can whenever you can, and that's something you have to weigh for yourself. Um, but just feel encouraged that you're doing the right thing. And, um, you know, we, we often get stuck in this rut of focusing on what the number on the scale says today or how our, our pants fit today. But this is larger than just us. It's generations. And if we truly want to pass on good health to our children and our children's 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 children, then um, it, it does take an act of faith today with you and with me. So um, just feel encouraged, make the right choices. Thanks for listening. Please share my video if this is a message that you support. Thanks. Bye.